So now that we've talked a bit about the flight controller and the flight application, which is the app gateway into the overall flight listing app, let's go ahead and take a look at another package, another microservice. This is going to be the, the airport microservice. And its purpose is essentially to return a flux that will emit all known airport objects. So in this case, we're gonna have a database, of course. And as before, it uses many of the same annotations that the flight app gateway did. It has a Spring Boot application. It enables discovery client. It uses entity scan, uses property sources. Some things that it does that are a little bit different is that it uses something called enable RDBC repositories and the enable RDBC uh, R2 DBC repositories is going to be used to activate the reactive relational repositories using R2 DBC, which is a, a reactive database, which is different, of course, than the JPA approach, which is a synchronous database as opposed to a reactive database. So what that suggests, of course, is that relational repositories that use R2 DBC are going to return fluxes or monos, typically fluxes, when you do lookups on them. So once again, we're able to be kind of asynchronous all the way down. Now we're not gonna look at that right at the moment because I'm gonna focus more on the, the controller APIs first, but we'll look at that when we dive into the implementation details later. If you come down here, you can see that we uh, have property sources. If you look over here in the repository, you'll see that there's airport properties and that defines things like what's the name of the microservice, which in this case is airport, what's the Hibernate database, what's the location of the schema and the data. And then you can see here that we have airport data and we have the schema that defines what an airport looks like. And it's got basically a, up to four letter code. And then it's got uh, the name that you can have of the, the city where the airport is located. All right. So those are just the properties that we can put in declaratively for an airport. And if we go back over here and we click on airport controller, you'll see that the airport controller is essentially what's used to return the contents of the airport database using Java reactive programming. And in this case, the way it's going to work is, as we'll see when we look at the implementation, it's gonna use the reactive repository that we talked about before. Here's what the interface looks like. It's very, very simple. We have an auto wired service, and then we have a get airports endpoint, which is going to return a flux of airports. And in this particular case, that's going to end up being a database lookup. I'll show you the database lookup later. It's really, really simple. Um, but what I'm trying to do now is just kind of give you the, the, the forest view as opposed to the tree view of everything that we're talking about here. Uh, another thing that is here is something that's called the exchange microservice. The exchange microservice is what is used to return the current exchange rate for various currencies asynchronously, of course. Once again, this is going to use an asynchronous database under the hood. And as before, we have a bunch of different repositories. And in this case, uh, we're going to use the R2 DBC repositories and uh, that will allow us to do this asynchronously. Once again, there's a bunch of properties. This is, this is kind of old hat at this point, but we've got properties giving the name, where to find the database, what type of database, and where to find the location of the data and the schema. Uh, and we'll take a closer look at those things when we get a little further along. But for right now, here's the controller, and the controller is just basically used to find out what the exchange rate is, it's very similar to what we saw before. It's a REST controller. It has an auto-wired exchange service where all the fun happens. And from an interface point of view, we have a get rate method that takes a from currency and a to currency and returns an exchange rate. And we have a get rates method that takes a to currency and goes and gives back a flux that will emit a list of exchange rate objects that, uh, contain the conversion rates from all the 
currencies that are provided. So we'll, we'll take a look and see how all that stuff works later. So there's a couple of different methods. And then the final thing I wanna talk about, just keeping it at a high level about the APIs are the airline microservices. And there's plural for a reason, there's, there's many of them. I only have two here. I have American Airlines and I have Southwest Airlines. So if we go to American Airlines, both of them are designed in pretty much the same way. They are going to have methods that will asynchronously find all the available flights, find the best price for a flight request, and find departure dates for a given pair of airports. And once again, you can see that we have a bunch of annotations here, and these annotations are used in order to tell the spring system what properties we want. So you can see where we're gonna scan to find the components. You can see what the various property sources are, Again, no, no real surprise here. If you look over here, we've got the American Airlines property, which says it's AAL-airline. The, the, the airline suffix is very important. You'll see how that gets used later when we talk about the implementation details of the app gateway microservice. We use the Hibernate H2 database. We get the schemas in various places and so on and so forth. Um, and so if you take a look back here, that's what the application microservice looks like. And because the airlines really only differ based on certain properties, like specifically what, what their name is, you know, Southwest Airline, which would look like this, where it would be SWA-Airline. Everything else is pretty much the same, but they're able to share quite a bit in common. And so, Here's the airline controller. This is a, a shared controller, shared in the sense that both applications use the same controller, but they override it with certain properties. And this controller has various endpoints that can be used to find all the available flights, find the best price for a flight request, and find departure dates for a given pair of airports. As before, we have a, an auto-wired service that does all the heavy lifting here. And actually most of the heavy lifting here is, is not particularly heavy. It's mostly forwarding to the databases to do their thing. And here you can see we have an endpoint method called find flights. And this of course will just find the flights that are registered with say American Airlines or find the flights that are registered for Southwest Airlines or British Airlines or Nippon Airlines or whatever, you know, Lufthansa. <clears throat> and so the idea here is that each airline database could be separate from each other. And then it's the job of the flights app gateway to consolidate and collect and merge together or combine the results from the different airline specific databases. So there's find flights and there's also find best price. And that will go out and find the best price for the particular airline for departure date and arrival airport and departure airport and so on. And then another method we have here, because it's, it's important to build a calendar type widget on the GUI would be something that will find the departure dates. And so that's just used to find all the, it'll return a flux that will emit all the matching departure dates. So that's the quick overview of the general portions of this program. There's also one more folder, which I'll just touch on here briefly, which is called common. And it contains all the various data structures for the models, like the airport, data structure, which as you can see here, is basically a, an entity class that can be used with a database, to keep track of the airports. We have the exchange rate, which is a very interesting approach that keeps track of the mapping from the from and the to, uh, concurrency values and the rates. We have the flight class, which is also another entity that keeps track of flights. And then we also have something called a flight request. And this is used to request certain flights. So it's kind of used as a, as a search key, if you will, to, to look things up. It's actually not an entity because it doesn't get stored in the database, but it's, it's used to do searches and matches. So that's the overview of kind of the architecture of this application. What we'll do next is we'll start diving down into the details of the different microservices in the app gateway.